Well, hello, Shippensburg, and Merry Christmas to your family from ours. My name is John Miller. I'm the Executive Director here at the Shippensburg Historical Society. And today I'm going to just talk a little bit about the American Christmas traditions that span from the 1700s all the way up to modern day. I'm going to touch on a little bit of some of the activities that these uh, uh, time periods would have had, as well as decorations, what types of food that they would have had at their feast, as well as the drinks and games. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start right on into it. So looking at the colonial period, this is from the year 1714 up to about the uh, late 1830s. This is more along the lines of the Georgian period if you're from England. But this time period here has kind of grown on to me. Not much has been written about Christmas as far as what they did. There's some first-hand accounts that are out there, but really images uh, such as paintings and etchings or drawings is where I found a lot of the really cool information um, as far as what they did. And this painting here, I absolutely love it because of the fact that it's so fun looking. But every time that I look into details of it, I always find something new that I haven't noticed. So what am I talking about as far as what is it that I see here? Well, I'm looking at the clothing, number one. And two, I'm looking at some of the other items with material culture from their long stem pipes to the glasses, the plates. But then when you look into it, I find a lot of humor in this. Because up here you have this gentleman here who is accepting a punch bowl from a servant. So this is looking at how he's dressed and how he's dressed. You're pretty much looking at a much higher um, society as far as like wealth is concerned. But there's still a lot of other interesting and fun things in here, such as this game of cards that are being played, and this guy here has a card that he's taking from up top of his head. And then you have this guy drinking out of the punch bowl, and he's laughing at it while he's petting the dog. These two guys are passed out, and you have this joker here who's playing a practical joke on this guy here by taking the contents and just dumping it on him. At the same time, this guy here, well, we're just going to say he's partying out, okay? But if he's not careful, he's going to end up burning his clothing here. Then you have this guy here who's pretty much uh, singing and dancing, laughing at these guys here. And then this guy here is checking on his partner who seems to be, well, he is also, what does to say, partied out. And of course this guy here, he's pretty much already passed out. So when you're looking at a painting like this, there's so much cool information in it that you can uh, pull out. So as far as Christmas during the colonial time period, if you were the Burgermeister, Meister Burger, or even the Scrooge, I think you would like this time period because not everybody celebrated Christmas. And that was because of the fact that it depended upon the location in the colony where you lived, and number two, what religion you practiced. So, for an example, in New England, with the Puritans, Christmas was already banned for the most point because of the fact that it was closely associated with pagan traditions. So for the Puritans as well as the German Quakers, Christmas is just a normal day. Now the Presbyterians, they did not hold formal Christmas services, not at first, but that changed after several of the ministers saw the congregation attending other churches, particularly the English church. So they would go ahead and start adding in um, Christmas services of their own for their own congregation. Um, if you were in Maryland, Virginia, or New York, the holiday was pretty much observed freely. And in the Carolinas, let's put it this way, those were party areas. And that was because of the fact that the Angelicans, the Roman Catholics, and the Lutherans, they're the ones that began introducing Christmas to North America. And it kind of starts the series of events to where Christmas becomes known as how we see it today. So one thing that they brought with them is the 12 days of Christmas. It starts on the 25th, and it ends on January 6th. And of course, January 6th, that is where everybody got together for the festivities. And you would have all kinds of social gatherings with lots of food and lots of drinks. Christmas during this time period was not child-friendly. It was more directed toward the adults. So in Pennsylvania... 
really, Christmas was kind of a mixture of things. And that was because William Penn, his policies created an ethnic and religi religious mix that was found in none of the other 12 colonies. Right now, Georgia is not a colony, so we're still holding at 12 and not 13. So this depended upon where you migrated from Europe to Pennsylvania and what traditions you brought with you. So for the Quakers, as Peter Kalm, who was a Swede visiting Philadelphia, noted, that the Quakers did not regard this day any more remarkable than other days. Stores were open, and anyone might sell or purchase what he wanted. There was no more baking of bread for Christmas festival than for other days, and there was no Christmas porridge on Christmas Eve. One did not seem to know what it meant to wish anyone a Merry Christmas. But then he went to the Roman church. He says, nowhere was Christmas Day celebrated with more uh, solemnity than the Roman church. Three sermons were preached there, and that which contributed most to the splendor of the ceremony was the beautiful music heard today. Pews and altar were decorated with branches of mountain laurel whose leaves are green in the wintertime, and they resemble the cherry laurel. So two totally different ways of how Christmas was celebrated in Pennsylvania. So he mentions decorations. So what kind of decorations did they have in the 1700s? Well, that depended upon your wealth status as well as where you lived. But for the most part, you would have garlands of holly, ivy, mountain laurel, berries, mistletoe, whatever natural resources that you could find that were still green during the December time frame. Lavender and rose petals and pungent herbs like rosemary and bay pretty much set the scent for the holiday season. So can you imagine walking into a house and smelling those scents? And then usually one or two rooms within the home would have been decorated as well as the front door. Now fruits such as apples and oranges were not used as decorations during this period because it was wasteful. Mistletoe was hung uh, pretty much all over the place. And then the church was generally more decorated than what the homes were. And then even though it's not technically a Christmas tree, some German settlements in Pennsylvania as well as Delaware may have had a community Christmas tree. There's not a whole lot of documentation on that. So as far as the Christmas feast was concerned, again, it depends on your wealth status as well as where you live. So Christmas meals would have featured fresh meats such as beef, goose, ham, or turkey. They would have also had fish, oysters, minced meat pies, as well as brandy peaches. The biggest feast, again, came on the 12th day of, or the 12th night of Christmas. Here in the frontier of Shippensburg, um, the main course may have been a little different. It would have been basically wild game, whether it be pheasant, duck, deer, um, rabbit, maybe a, a goose, maybe a turkey. It all depended upon what it was that you could find hunting in the mountain. Some of the sides, of course, during this time period, you hear a lot about puddings. So sweet potato pudding, bread pudding, which is kind of like stuffing, Indian pudding, which is cornmeal based, as well as cranberry sauce. The desserts, drop biscuit, or what is known as a cookie or a wafer. The 12th uh, night cake, which I have an image of that toward the end of this part. Pies, pumpkin, apple, Christmas custard, which was pretty much like a pie topping. And then Christmas wafers, which was like a very thinly styled pancake. Christmas drinks, um, again, it depended upon your wealth and status, but a lot of the popular non-alcoholic drinks would have been chocolate drinks, coffee and teas. Popular alcoholic drinks, uh, spirits by far were the most popular, followed by wine, cider, and then beer, ale. So hot buttered rum known as Flip was very popular. Philadelphia Fish House Punch, Eggnog, Cider, uh, sangaree, rattle skull. Some of these recipes I'm actually going to try myself at home this year. Spruce beers would have been another popular type of uh, beer that, that they would drink. 
when you had gatherings going on, games were a huge form of entertainment, whether it be from hunting like they did in the southern colonies to stool ball, which is kind of like a cricket. Various board games like chess or checkers, nine men's uh, Morris. They had a form of football known as rugby or soccer. This was pretty much banned in New England because of how violent the game was. Gambling games, various card games were also popular. Ice skating was extremely popular. And then Skittles, which was kind of like a bowling game, where you have pins set up, and then you would have something that would roll and you would try to knock them over. Christmas carols would have been sung in all social gatherings. So if you think of a Christmas party where we have a Spotify playlist, well, Joy to the World, The First Noel, God Rest You, Merry Gentlemen, these would have been the example of party songs that they would have sang. And of course, lots of dancing would have also occurred um, during this time period as well in the homes. Musical instruments, um, the fiddle, which fiddlers during this time period were not looked highly upon. Um, but you would also have fife, maybe a dulcimer, maybe a flute. Um, upper class would have had more access to luxury instrumentation. African Americans, um, they, of course, they would have had the banjo, which was basically a hollowed out gourd with an animal skin over top and a neck and strings. So the banjo was not what an Englishman would have played but it was more along the lines of what the African-American uh, community would have played. Christmas gifts, you know, we have Christmas exchanging as far as gifts today. Back then, it was not something that was widely um, done. So, if anything that would be exchanged as far as a gift, it would be from maybe a father to a son, um, a business owner to maybe his apprentice, um, if you were wealthy, maybe you would give something to your servants um, or even your slaves. But other areas of North America, and I love this here, public notice the observation of Christmas having been deemed a sacrilege, the exchanging of gifts and greetings, dressing and fine clothing, feasting and similar satanical practices are hereby forbidden with the offender liable to a fine of five shillings. And, of course, that came from New England area. So some of the Christmas drawings from this time period that I really love to, um, to look at as far as, like, getting material culture, getting ideals, or just seeing what day-to-day -day practices were. This one here, you have a group of ladies. You can see there's some type of a bowl there, and they're offering it to this family here. That's why he's kind of holding his hands out like this. This one here is pretty interesting. This is Christmas um, in 1781. And of course you can see where the child is kind of like pushed in the corner a little bit while the adults have all kinds of fun. Here you got the prankster. He's trying to balance this bowl on his head as well as, I'm not sure what he's trying to do with that loaf of bread. You can see the bowl right here. Um, again, tobacco pipes. Here, this guy here is being uh, basically pranked. So you got a girl that's playing with him. Well, this guy is taking a chair out from underneath of him. And at the same time, this guy here is basically taking his cup of ale and is dumping it right in his pocket. And then, of course, you have the mistletoe hung up here. And, of course, you have a couple that are already underneath of it kissing. This one here is a, another more laid-back uh, Christmas scene. You can see the decorations here. You can see again what I refer to as the punch bowl. Um, I don't see mistletoe here, but you do have a couple that are over here. And of course, so far as you can see, a lot of these will feature uh, animals. And again, here's a tavern, but you got your animals here. Um, this might be mistletoe up here. I'm not 100 percent sure. Here's more of a wealthier setting as far as a Christmas party is concerned. You got dancing, you have a fiddler here, cat up on the table while the dog is right here playing with him. Um, kissing going on. 
So just a lot of really cool, unique things that are happening here. And of course you can see, again, the punch bowl. Here's more of a laid back. So you got the mistletoe or the kissing bowl here. You already got your couple here. Um, you can see that here is a mug um, or pint for some type of ale. This guy here is kind of obviously mistaken as far as like, whoa, what's going on here? He gets excited because he's dropping his ale onto the floor at the same time. And then here is a good example of the 12th night cake. And you can see how it's decorated. They have little figures on there. So now we're starting to make our way into the 1800s. Um, the Georgian era was because of a, um, the rule of a couple Georges of England. But then you get into the Regency era, which also kind of coincides with that time period. It's basically when things are a little more relaxed. Here in America, that's known as the Federalist period. But in 1811 to 1820, you kind of start seeing Christmas and how it's being celebrated changing, uh, particularly here in America. So for me, I would say this time period, the Grinch would have loved it because at first he really does not like Christmas because of its commercialization. Um, but then toward the end, he finally understands it. So, and that's exactly what this era is. It's a transition from the old going into more of a modern. So Christmas gatherings, um, gatherings for the most part, they're exactly the same as they were during the colonial period. During the 12 gay days of Christmas, people held a wide variety of festivities, including balls, parties, dinners, house parties, visits, they went skating, card parties, as well as smaller gatherings, including some weddings. Christmas Day feast was the start so in the colonial period, remember, the 12th day was pretty much the height, the height of the 12 days of Christmas. Now you're seeing a transition to, it starts out on Christmas Day. So the next 11 days would basically be filled with social calls as well as all kinds of different um, you know, holiday parties and such. And this one here is kind of interesting as far as Christmas goes because you do have your decorations that are right here. And of course, a lot of food that's on that table there. So, Christmas decorations, again, exactly the same as what they would have been during the colonial period. So, holly, ivy, mountain laurel, you would have lavender, rose petals. Um, some of the uh, rooms of the house be decorated as well as the door. Wealthier families may have had a more like a kissing ball, and even though that's an English tradition. And of course, as people started moving from England to the United States, they would bring a lot of their traditions over here as well, especially as our um, communications were a little bit better. During this time period, as far as Christmas decorations were concerned, it was terribly unlucky, unlucky to bring your Christmas greenery into the house prior to Christmas Eve. And then don't forget to remove it and burn it um, for good luck. And here's just another simple Christmas gathering. And you can see the two couple there. And of course the mistletoe that's at the top. The Christmas feast, basically the same thing. But now you're starting to get into a little bit of a transition as far as popular different types of uh, dishes. So, aside from everything, what's new this time is that you have wild boar and brawn. And of course, brawn is the pig's head. Black butter was very popular, which was like a fruit preserve. Kind of known as today as apple butter. Fruit cakes and of course gingerbreads. And some of those may have also been popular during the colonial period too. Christmas Day drinks um, would include kind of like eggnog, punches, pretty much the same as what they were, but now you kind of see it where it's starting to become a little more mild rather than a, an all-out party. And here you can see another Christmas uh, dish that's being uh, plated up by the mom, and of course the kids are running around. 
So you can kind of get the, the idea that now kids are starting to become included. Christmas games would be played um, a lot different this time around. So this time, Snapdragon, and that's what this is. And Snapdragon sounds like it's a little unsafe, if you ask me, but basically raisins were soaked in brandy in a large, shallow bowl. The lights would be turned out, the brandy would be lit, and people had to grasp a raisin and eat it without burning themselves. Uh, Charades was another popular uh, game. Um, Spillkins, which were pickup sticks. Hoodman's Blind, which is kind of like today's uh, Marco Polo. Um, bullet Pudding. This is kind of interesting. Um, it's a game that's played by filling a large uh, dish with flour, pile it up to sort of a pudding, and at the peak of the top, you lay a bullet. And then everybody cuts a slice of it, and the person that is eating it, when the bullet falls, must poke the bullet out only using their nose and chin until they find it. To take it out, one uses their mouth, which makes them strange figures covered in flour. The worst is that you must not laugh in fear of flour getting up your nose, mouth, or even choking you. You must not use your hands at all when trying to take the bullet out. So that, that's kind of an interesting game. And then you have the Twelfth Night tradition for ladies to pick a uh, man's name from a hat. And that man would basically be her partner for the rest of the night. So now we're starting to get into the Victorian era, 1837 through 1901. This here, for the most part, if you were Buddy the Elf, you would love this period because now it's starting to get more brighter. It's more cheerful. It's more family-oriented. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Plus, it's when Santa Claus and Christmas trees were introduced to North America. So Christmas gatherings here before 1850, um, again, not every American dreamed of Christmas at all, but it became more accepted, um, more child-friendly, more family uh, togetherness. The festivities this time would begin on Christmas Eve with Christmas giving or uh, gift giving. Many family gatherings took place on Christmas Eve in order for everyone to attend church on Christmas Day, and then they would go out and socialize and party again. Uh, houses were decorated this time with garlands, um, same way as always. But now you're starting to see accents of ribbons, flowers, berries, fruits such as apples, oranges. And these were meant to give the greens a sense of color. Uh, still you have mistletoe. The Christmas tree was introduced in America in the 1830s in Pennsylvania. However, each year that went by, it became more and more popular. It really didn't see it in everybody's houses until about the 1890s. But Christmas trees were generally decorated with candles by using um, frilly, glittery ornaments and shapes of balls, bells, and fruits. Lace and ribbons would also be attached. Transform paper images of angels, fairies, birds, and stars into festive uh, treasures. Um, so you can kind of see where now the Christmas tree is starting to play a huge role in every day or uh, every Christmas. Christmas greeting cards were also introduced in America in the 1850s. The Christmas feast, pretty much the same as what they, it has always been. You got your goose, turkey, oysters, potatoes. Stuffed peppers was something that kind of jumped out at me. Um, of course, side dishes or desserts like fruit cake, sugar plums, chestnuts, fruits, apple sauce, cranberry sauce, macaroons, bread sauce is also um, another common type of uh, food that you would see at a social gathering. And of course, the Christmas tables would be decorated. Now, this is here is obviously much higher class. Uh, drinks were also important, but again, you kind of see where the time periods where everybody is settling down. So now punches are beginning to make a, um, are becoming more and more popular. So types of drinks that you would have had during this time period, uh, mulled wine, which was also popular during the colonial time, but um, 
smoking bishop, Roman punch, eggnog, hot gin punch, cocktails. Cocktails is a drink that is becoming extremely popular during this time period. And here you can kind of see these gentlemen enjoying uh, some spirits. Christmas games, again, a little different. Now you have Squeak Piggy Squeak, which is where you guess who the person is. Blind Men's Buff. Uh, Up Jenkins, which is a coin passing game. Hoop and Hide, which is an adult version of Hide and Seek with apparently lots of kissing. Chain Sheets, similar to Musical Chairs. Shadow Bluff. Now this is a game that I would like to try to play. This is where you try to guess the person based on their shadow. Hunt to Ring, which we've done before. That's where you have basically a ring and a ribbon and everybody stands in a circle and you just pass it, you know, left, right. And the person in the center with their eyes closed has to guess who has the ring. And of course, cards. And here you can see a game of blind and that's buff, uh, bluff being, buff being played here. Christmas songs. This is something that's interesting because during the 1700s, like I said, God rest ye merry gentlemen, popular tune. But then you start getting into the 1800s and you start seeing more and more popular songs that we hear today every year on the radio, whether it be Old Christmas Tree or It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, Jingle Bells, We Three Kings, Go Tell It to the Mountain. Christmas gifts. Now this depended upon the family's wealth because toys were not mass produced. A lot of toys were still handmade and because of that you don't have the abundance of toys and what's there it could be very expensive. So the more uh, wealthier children would actually receive a toy whereas more of the uh, lower class kids basically would receive a stocking um, that was filled with kind of candies, nuts, uh, small things like that, fruits. But as industries began mass producing, toys became widely available, but still um, the less wealthier class didn't always receive a new toy. But gift giving, this was something that was for the children at the time. Of course you have the father of modern Christmas, which is Charles Dickens um, in his book A Christmas Carol. Um, this was released and published in December of 1843. And of course, the Christmas Carol has been around and has been remade so many times, hundreds of times. Whether it be TV shows, radio broadcasts, plays, live action TV movies, uh, movies. Last night I was just watching the 2019 version of it. But this is something that's been around for over 170 years. Of course, you got Santa Claus. Now, the first mentions of St. Nicholas goes back to December of 1773 and 1774 in New York, when a New York newspaper reported that Dutch families would gather to honor the anniversary of Santa Claus. Santa Claus um, is what we call him now, or St. Nicholas, or Kris Kringle. He has a long history steeped in Christmas traditions. He was first introduced to American popular culture in the 1820s with Clement Moore's, an account of a visit from St. Nicholas. By the 1850s and 60s, artists um, like Thomas Nast started basically creating Santa Claus to the image that we kind of see familiar today. And then other artists would also go on, including Nast, to give him a story, whether it be the home at the North Pole, elves, a wife, and by some accounts, he would have children. So, as far as like the Christmas era, I'm going to pick my pointer up here. The Victorian era Christmas, as you can see, it's a lot brighter, a lot toned down compared to what you've seen um, previously in the colonial era. you got toys that are out. Everybody's helping to light the uh, candles on the Christmas tree. And you can pretty much see this is a very peaceful um, scene. Same way with here, preparing for the Christmas Day feast. So here you have children as well as um, goose. And of course, toys, toys. Looks like there might be a toy there. 
But then you also go into from drawings to etchings to paintings, but now to photography. And photography is a great resource tool when looking at Christmas traditions. So you got the Christmas tree here with the girls and the boy and some of their toys. And you can see how everything's underneath of the tree. The image of Santa Claus. And then how the kids are having a lot of fun here and dancing. And of course you got the one kid here who is apparently is on the playing music or he is kind of pretending he's playing while somebody else plays that's not in the photograph. So Christmas during the 20th century. So we talked about the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s, and really not much has changed. Um, we still decorate Christmas trees, we fill stockings. The only change that we see in the 1900s is Black Friday. This is when stores, department stores, decided to go ahead and get everybody moving for the Christmas um, season, get them to come in and buy, buy, buy. 1931, uh, Coca-Cola commissioned um, uh, Sunbloom to create the image of Santa that we see on the Coca-Cola. This was done because during the wintertime not too many people drink uh, sodas. So now you have the image of Santa Claus drinking uh, Coca-Cola. That would help to drive up sales. In post-war America, going into like the 1950s, Christmas saw a huge uh, growth of a larger middle class. Therefore, people were able to afford more things. With radio, Christmas music can be heard uh, throughout the entire country. And of course, with the invention of movie theaters and TVs, people can watch Christmas programs on the screen. And some of these movies are still as popular today as they were when they were first introduced. So... Usually at this point I would ask if there was any questions, but I just want to say um, from our family to your family, again, this year has been crazy. But we want to make sure that everybody has a happy and safe holiday season. Just want to say Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. And we'll see you next year. Thank you.